the first thing I always do is I go back to the very beginning and find out what the creators um, were thinking about. Because um, after all, these, they're, not my, they're not my ballets. They were created by these great masters, but they need rethinking and reliving for present day audiences. But I, I've always done that, is to find out um, what the initial inspiration was. When I uh, was thinking about, about Swan Lake and how to approach it, I tried to think how it all starts at the beginning, because I think that's terribly important to set something at the very beginning to give the public and everyone um, a guide to where we're going. In Swan Lake, it always worried me that we had the queen, no king, and um, a prince who didn't really have a positive, definite line or character. And I thought, well, to establish this and give him some real purpose in the ballet, not to be just a romantic young man dreaming of some beautiful ideal, I wanted something to give him um, a, a direction, so I decided as they hadn't, we'd never known what, where or what happened to the king, we'd started off with a funeral procession, procession, making it very clear the king has died and this young man, who hasn't discovered much about life yet, is faced with the uh, situation that he's got to get married and take the throne. He doesn't want to, and he doesn't want to marry someone he doesn't love. And just starting with that wonderful music in the overture, which is very stirring, I thought, well, I'm going to use that and just get this, uh, an image, a vision of, uh, uh, of a funeral procession to show what a predicament the, the prince is in. And I also tried very much to think, I mean, we always think of Swan Lake as the Swan Queen. Well. The interesting thing, as I find now, is actually the story is more, for me, the prince's story, but it's the Swan Queen's ballet in the end, because it has such a wonderful um, role and everything. Um, and usually, the prince is he's very secondary. And I think it's, 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 it's good to make, bring him out and make it his story because that's what happens in the end, and he, he breaks his word in the end, and it accentuates this whole thing of the, the Gothic period, because it's, we regard it very much as, a, as a, a romantic Gothic tragedy. And that's why we've, it is, and it starts, you know, with these big, great towers, and um, um, the, this feeling that um, uh, there's a problem in the court. And that's so much reflected in the music because it's such a wonderful score. And it's not all um, uh, thrills and happiness in Swan Lake. And the music, I mean, it's so powerful. And I think you've got to gr grab onto that and use it. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I mean, I don't, don't misunderstand me. I, um, I, I hope I haven't made it into something when it's all dreary. And it's not. It's, it's, it's full of life, too, and, and hope, and uh, that's why at the very end of the ballet, although um, the prince and the swan queen, they decide there's only one solution, they have to kill themselves, which means, they, in fact, they are reunited in paradise. So we get the double image at the end. Benno, his friend, comes around at the last moment, desperately looking for the prince, and finds him down, in the, down by the lake, drowned, and comes with a body, um, walks forward with a body. And at the same time, up in the heavens, you see um, the prince and, um, and Odile, uh, Odette, <laughs> Odette, the good one, um, reunited um, forever. So although he's got his comeuppance, and they've, they're both dead, still, Love transcends death. There are, there are uh, certain things I felt I had to do. There's no real version, for instance, of the waltz, the big waltz in Act One, 
when it was originally done in, in Russia, it was huge. I think they had something like 32 couples or something. No companies outside uh, Russia has that these days. And I, I was anxious too to have an opportunity to really give the dancers um, an opportunity to, to, so we could see their, their, their um, potential and their talent. So I redid the, the walls. And also, the other, one of the major things I did in Act One, usually you have the, what's called the Pas de Trois, for, uh, which is danced by the, uh, the prince's um, friend and equerry, Benno, and two, two girls. Uh, you never know quite who the girls are or what, why on earth they're doing it. So I, I decided that as the prince, in Act One usually, is, he just, it's really a mime role. He just sits and watches and everyone's being very nice to him and all that, and he's a bit sulky. Um, I thought, well, heavens be, let him dance as well. So I brought him in to the, this and incorporated a solo in it. Strangely enough, musically, that's how it was written. Tchaikovsky wrote it with the, 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 um, the, the music that's now incorporated for the Prince's solo. I put that in and gave him an opportunity to, to express his, his, his anticipation, his apprehension of the future, um, his, his deep worries and problems, and also show that he can dance. He's not just a, a cardboard figure. Because after all, when it comes back to, he just partners the, the ballerina. And this works very well. And it also brings in, and I also made, made the, the two girls into courtesans. I mean, highly paid, highly paid prostitutes who are there to um, uh, amuse him and entertain him and trying to get him out of his, his um, uh, rather deep depression. So I, I, I rearranged all that with the help of Galina Samsova, um, who, who actually the version she knew from Kiev has the, the, um, that musical arrangement um, with, the, with the prince's solo. And I, I re-choreographed the solo. Um, when we get to act two, that's untouched virtually. It's different slightly from some versions, but it's based, based very much on the, the Russian version that Galina Samsova knew from, from Kiev, where she was ballerina. And I've, I think it's one of the most beautiful um, uh, versions of Act Two, choreographically and pattern-wise, and the, the steps are virtually the same as most companies now do, but the style of it is very, very beautiful indeed. So that is um, original Ivanov, I would say. When it comes to Act Three, there are certain things, again, I, I changed. Um, again, with the help of Samsova, the, the big um, uh, national dances like the Hungarian Shardash, uh, we used her version that she knew from Kiev, and also uh, the Mazurka, which is usually rather sleep-making. It sort of tends to send one off to sleep a bit. It's rather just endless people berserking around the around the stage, but she's, she, it's, it's a very good, interesting and exciting version of, of the Mazurka, the Polish section. And I redid the famous Neapolitan dance. Usually it's done as a, as a um, just as a couple. And the version I've always known was choreographed by uh, Sir Frederick Ashton. I didn't feel that I, I had the right to use his choreography and anyway, I didn't want to have just two dancers. I wanted to spread it over more, more artists in the company. And so I, uh, I redid that with, with four dancers. And that again, especially here, I have to say, these, the, the way they dance it here is better than anywhere I've, in my other productions I've done. They're stunning. And they really grip, get to grips to it, and they're together, and they're exciting, and it's a real, a real tarantella. Neapolitan dance. I'm thrilled with that. And, and the main thing, of course, in, in, in Act 3, with all the acts, is, is the dramatic structure of the, uh, the ballets. But um, the great change, in a way, was Act 4. I read it, that um, a lot. And again, you see, sadly, 
with Swan Lake, you get to Act 4 and people think, well, we've seen Act 1, we've seen Act 2 with the white acts, beautiful, and excitements and the, uh, all the technical feats in Act 3, and then think, well, while we've got to see Act 4, nothing really seems to happen much. So I made something really happen, and I've, I've made it um, much more dramatic. And I've put in a special, an extra pas de deux for the prince and the, um, and the Swan Queen, really to bring out the tragedy and the drama of the, of the whole uh, situation. And uh, I'm not the first person who's put in a pas de deux for, for it, but the way it's worked musically. And, um, uh, and although basically it's, I, I am, uh, most of the choreography is mine, it is still very much in the style of Ivanov. And also, Samsa again, we worked very closely together about that, uh, 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 recreating and uh, developing it. So those are the main things I've changed.